Most runners waste their time on the wrong training. But research shows there are five runs that actually make you faster. In this video, I'll break them down, explain why they work, and at the end, I'll show you exactly how to fit them into a full week of training. My name is Nicholas. I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist, and former professional triathlete. So when does it actually make sense to start to think about different types of runs? I'll put another way. As a beginner, should you just focus on getting out the door? If you've been around the running community, you'll know the standard answer. Don't even think about VO2 max work or tempo runs until you can get out the door consistently and run at least five kilometers. And honestly, it's usually the advice that I give too. But when I looked up the research, I actually found something surprising. A scientific review from 2021 showed that high intensity interval training can create big improvements in fitness and health, even in complete beginners. So technically, there's nothing stopping you from trying to do high intensity intervals from day one. But at the same time, a scientific review from 2010 that looked at the best practice for training in endurance athletes found that having a strong aerobic foundation built through lots of easy running makes you more likely to benefit from harder training later on. Or put another way, while high intensity intervals do work, Easy runs actually matter a ton. You see, low intensity runs build the base that your body needs. You get more capillaries, more mitochondria, and better durability. Or put simply, they build your endurance. And the evidence is pretty clear. The more running volume you can handle consistently, the better your performance becomes. So here's how I see it. In the beginning, don't overthink it. Just focus on building the habit and getting out the door consistently. Which is why the first of the five most effective runs is the zone two run. So what is this special zone two run that we see everywhere on the internet? Well, even though scientists usually divide running into three zones, most coaches use five because it's just more practical. So when people talk about zone two running, they usually mean just around what's called your first lactate threshold or LT1. It's the pace where you can hold a conversation and it's usually around 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. And it's not magical. It's just that if you train around that first lactate threshold, then you can move that threshold so you can run faster, which basically means that you can run faster for longer without getting tired. And that's exactly what we want. Now, there are two types of zone two running. The short, easy run and the long run. Short, easy runs can be any length you like, and they are usually part of a weekly schedule just to rack up the miles without causing too much fatigue. Long runs, on the other hand, are the longest run of your week. But how long should it be? In 2020, researchers tracked almost 1,000 runners and found that those who ran longer than 21 kilometers in training ran significantly faster half marathons. They also found that for the marathon, the longest run needed to be longer than 25 kilometers to get a significantly faster performance. So while there's no magic number for how long a long run should be, I think that a good starting point is more than 21 kilometers if you're going for a half marathon and more than 25 kilometers if you're going for a marathon. But if you want to run faster, we can't rely on long runs and easy runs alone. According to a review from 2010, high intensity training is a critical component in the training of all successful endurance athletes. However, about two high intensity interval training sessions per week seems to be enough to get the physiological adaptations and performance gains without too much stress on the body over the long term. They even found that in athletes who already had an established endurance base and could handle high training loads, training harder could still give small performance gains. If zone two builds the foundation, then this next run pushes your limits to the max. Literally. You see, research has shown that your VO2 max is one of the strongest predictors of performance all the way down to the mile. And just one or two sessions per week is enough to keep driving improvements without burning out. So when zone two runs and long runs are all about building your base, then VO2 max workouts are about raising the ceiling. VO2 max is essentially the maximum amount of oxygen your body can take in and use during intense exercise. The higher it is, the bigger your engine becomes comes and the more potential you have to run faster. So what's the best way to improve it? It's pretty simple. 
It's those grueling workouts where you feel like your lungs are gonna give in. It's usually hard intervals of two to five minutes with the same or slightly less recovery in between. The classic example is from a study from 2007 that found that doing four by four minute intervals with a three minute break in between was a great way to improve VO2 max. And to be honest, I used to dread those four by four minute intervals when I was doing professional triathlon, but at the same time, they were some of the best workouts to make me run faster. So zone two is your base and VO2 max is your ceiling. But here's the real question. How much of that fitness can you actually use in a race? That's where the third run comes in. You see, your second lactate threshold, or LT2, is the point where your body starts producing lactate faster than it can clear it. Run just under that point and you can keep running for a sustained period of time. Run just over it and you'll slow down quickly. And that's why threshold training is so effective. It raises the second lactate threshold, or basically it raises the hardest or fastest pace that you can maintain. And research has shown that pace at the second lactate threshold is one of the strongest predictors of running performance. So how do we train it? Threshold runs are usually longer runs in that comfortably hard pace. It's that pace where you can say short sentences, but you can't hold a full conversation. To me, it's that annoying pace where I can't let my mind wander, but I can't give it my all either. So I just have to stay in it. A great way to train this is something like five times six minutes with a one minute break in between. So where zone two builds the base and VO2 max expands the ceiling, then your threshold determines how much of that ceiling you can actually use in a race. Now, before I'm gonna show you how to juggle all of these runs in a weekly schedule, let's first quickly go over the fifth type of run to make you run faster for longer. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated types of runs that I wish more runners would use in their training. You see, a scientific review from 2016 looked at what actually makes running more economical. Basically, how to run faster using less energy. They found that key factors include firing your muscles more efficiently, aligning your push-off forces properly through the leg, and improving leg stiffness so your legs work more like springs. And here's the important part. Short sprints, strides, and hill sprints are exactly the kind of sessions that train these qualities. Think of them as tuning your engine. They make every stride smoother, snappier, and more efficient without the fatigue of a long run. So how do we use them most effectively? Sprints are very short max efforts, usually around eight to 15 seconds with a full recovery in between. They don't feel like traditional running workouts because they're so short. And in my opinion, Hill sprints are one of the best ways to do it because when we run uphill, we reduce the impact. So how do we mix and match all of these workouts to maximize our performance? There are three main ways that have been proven by science to be the most effective. The first one is called pyramidal training, where we do 80% easy, 15% medium, and 5% hard. The second is 80-20 training, where we do 80% easy, then 0 to 5% medium, and then 15 to 20 20% hard. And the last one is called threshold training, where we do 50 to 60% easy, then at least 35% medium, and then 0 to 5% hard. And according to a review from 2017, the most effective methods for most people is pyramidal training or 80-20 training. So spending most of our time running doing easy work, and then some doing the hard stuff. So what could this look like in practice? Let me give you an example. If we follow an 80-20 model and run for a total of 200 minutes throughout the week, 40 of those minutes should be hard. One way to accomplish this could be to have a VO2 max session on Monday. This could be three by three minutes hard, which gives us the first nine hard minutes. Then we can do a tempo session of three by 10 minutes at a hard but sustainable pace on Thursday. That brings our total to 39 minutes hard. Then for the final minute, we could add six by 10 seconds sprints on Saturday, and our total is now 40 minutes of hard work for that week. The other 160 minutes of running that week is easy. But even if you nail all of these runs, your body will still fall short if you're not strong enough to handle the mileage. So to help you fix that, I've broken down the eight most efficient lifts for runners in this video right here. 